So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you got your notes back? I don't know. She's. Just no, no, no. Yeah. So, can we just? Are we good for now? Then? Yeah. Yay. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> So I brought a couple of props here. This is my poster that does not behave, and I don't have any good way to um, hold Whoa. it up. <laughs> you want me to hold the bottom part? Yeah, thanks. Adam. At least you hold the bottom part. Okay, but these are the cousins. And remember I told you these are all different forms of electromagnetic radiation. And my point on the slide where it says all objects continually emit radiation over a range of wavelengths, that's what it's talking about. Okay? Um... And it's funny because the only ones that we see are visible light, but all sorts of other energies are coming. So we kind of talked about that, and the way this is organized is these are getting longer wavelengths, okay? And you can actually see this is less energetic. These are getting shorter wavelengths. They're more energetic. So what's a little bit longer wavelength than light? Ultraviolet light. That's a little bit shorter wavelength. Oh, it's going shorter. Ultraviolet right is long. a little shorter wavelength. Infrared. What's a longer wavelength? Infrared. Exactly. Uh, Exactly, IR. Very good. Infection is called IR. And infrared, actually, part of it really is kind of this thermal energy. Okay, so that's why I brought this today. Okay. So this is a wonderful gizmo. Some of you already know what it is. Um, so the way it works, that red dot has nothing to do with how it's sensing. It's basically just saying that, that this gun is pointed at that wall. What is it measuring here? Temperature. Temperature, exactly. Isn't that so fun? I can measure the temperature of that wall over there, 71. Maybe there's temperature of autumn, 86. I, I measure the temperature of my dog sometimes, you know. <laughs> measure the temperature of that, um, this display thing. Before she goes outside, she shoots out that to cold go out. Right, to cold. I'll see you. Right. It's just so fun. But in a practical way, um, like I, one of the things I do in my house, I'm responsible for is covering the windows and trying to, you know. And so you can look for cold spots. You know, so it's really helpful. But I think fire people, fire, fire really kind of can put this in the ashes to without mm -hmm. go, stepping there, see if they have any hot spots. What if they also use it to do uh, body sensing? Body sensing? The yeah, if they go into a fire, a body temperature is different from a the fire. They'd be colder. Okay. And they can use the uh, infrared reading to support different bodies. Ah. Yeah, and that doesn't that bring in, there's like infrared photography. Actually, you can make um, your camera sensitive to any way, any cousin yes. you want. And so, you know, isn't that neat? But our cameras your are phone, looking at visible light. People's phone, iPhone can do the same thing. With the camera, you can really? change the setting on, you can change your perspective on the reading. Of the and it's looking, see, and, and that's what this slide is saying, is that all objects, including us, you know, we see the visible colors and everything kind of, but we're also oozing infrared radiation. Do you think we're oozing gamma rays? No. But the sun is. <laughs> okay. So that's one of the laws of radiation. <coughs> and actually, we can make these curves to kind of show how much energy at different wavelengths that objects are oozing. And those are called radiation curves. So one of this thing is when you see these radiation curves here in a minute, the, the more the energy, or sorry, the hotter the object, the more the energy it emits at all wavelengths, all different cousins. And the other thing, again, has to do with hotter objects, is the hotter the object, then the more the object emits energy at those shorter wavelengths. So these are the cousins. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Mm -hmm. So at the top we have, what's the, what's the shortest wavelength of energy? Cosmic. No, not Short, cosmic, yeah. but that could, be, that could be a source of energy. What's this one up here? It's, it's even more energetic than x-rays. You want to tell them? Gamma? Yeah, there's x-rays. Oh, cosmic. Yeah, it is cosmic up there. But I was after gamma. Yeah, they're showing x- they're showing x-rays as being kind of gamma. Kind of, yeah. 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 Well, they kind of, yeah. It's on gamma is an x-ray, part of an x-ray sensor. Okay. Well, I mean, it does like, like here, though, like soft x-rays, and it kind of goes down to the lower amount. There's definitely then, overlap. Yeah. yeah. But the thing I was going to say is that like if an object is really hot, we're going to see it emit a lot of this and and probably a lot of everything. Okay. But if an M, we're going to see in a minute a curve of like the earth and the earth really doesn't emit these, but the earth emits these because it's cooler than actually I'm going to compare it to the sun. Okay. So longer wavelength. So 
something that's cooler is going to emit longer wavelength stuff. Its, it's peak is actually going to be in the longer wavelength. Okay, if it's hotter, shorter wavelength. Okay, then the other one, I brought this uh, styrofoam cup from my office for this one. Okay. Would you say, with regard to um, absorber, um, absorbing energy, okay, when I, when I go ahead and microwave water, make the water hot, okay, do you think, does my hand get hot? No, it, that was going to be my point. It, it, it does a great job. It basically, what we say, insulates the energy inside from my hand, okay? Styrofoam, styrofoam is not a good absorber, okay? Styrofoam is not a good absorber. And actually, we're going to see that air is not a good absorber, okay, of energy. Do you think the earth is a good absorber? Yes. <laughs> The Earth is a really good absorber. And if it's a good absorber, then like this says, the law of radiation is it's a good emitter. Okay? This does not absorb thermal energy. It's basically, thank goodness, that's what we use it. It blocks us from the hot coffee. At the same okay. time, does it, the energy that it's blocking, so to speak, the heat from the coffee, does it also throw it back, so to speak, because so it keeps to the speak. coffee yeah. warmer. Yeah, those little hot water molecules want to get transfer that energy because they're, oh, they're going so fast because they're hot, right? And so when they bounce up against the cup, instead of, you know, imparting some of that energy to the cup, because the cup's a good insulator, not a good um, absorber, then it just goes, kind of bounces back into the rest of the water, hot water. I'm like, okay, I guess I won't give it anything to the cup because the cup <laughs> does not want it. So these are those curves that I was talking about. So this is the curve of the sun. Okay, so along the y-axis you have intensity. So where the red curve, where the red line is great, that means at that energy, okay, that means you have a lot of energy, you have a lot of energy being being emitted by the sun. Along the um, x-axis are wavelengths. So over here we have, we don't have um, gamma rays and x-rays, but we do have ultraviolet visible, and then longer than visible is infrared, we could go on from there. Kind of we have a part of the different cousins, not all of them, okay? So that is the fingerprint of the sun. So when the sun's sending energy all our way, okay, that's what it's sending. And we're going to talk about how not all that energy gets, gets to us here on Earth, thank goodness. But we can take the fingerprint of the sun and we can match it up with the temperature. That's characteristic of a temperature at its surface, not the core, but the sun's about 10,000 um, degrees Fahrenheit. So I just think this is adorable. Okay, there's a break in the the x-axis there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but clear down there at the end, that's that's a fingerprint of the Earth. If we were beyond the Earth, looking at the Earth, that's our heat signature. So a few things about that: is it um, is it as tall as the sun's? No. no. So that's one of the laws of radiation. It's cool. And that's a fingerprint of something that's oozing or running about a temperature of 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, does it kind of shifted? Is it more short or long wavelength? Short. Sure. Should, should be long. It's more long wavelength. Oh yeah, and 20. That, yeah, I didn't and see those numbers. <laughs> yeah, and that's characteristic of the lower the temperature, long wavelength. Yeah, lower temperature. So that's our fingerprint. Okay. So. Um, and this kind of makes sense. Don't get caught up in the, the whole science part of this and say, well, what does that mean? But it kind of makes sense that when, if, if light is, a, is an entity or if energy is an entity, then, um, and it hits a particle, something's going to give. That, that energy or that light or that radiation is going to interact with that particle. And, and the outcome depends upon what energy it is and what the particle is. So it depends upon those two things. So things that you're already familiar with, okay, are these. Um, you may not know it, but you are already familiar with these. Okay, so scenarios include um, that that energy can be absorbed by the particle. That particle can just roll over dead and basically transmit that energy, okay? Say, whatever, go on through, okay? Or that particle can say, no, you're not going, and you're going that way instead, okay? So basically absorbing energy, passing through, okay, or redirecting. 
then again, it depends upon which energy and um, what particle. So if we kind of look at 100 units coming from the sun, here's the possibilities of things that and we're, I know um, that clouds make a difference, you know, types of clouds and how much cloud cover, but just in general, here's one scenario, okay, where we ultimately have 30% that return, 30% of the sun, okay, doesn't, doesn't stick around. 30% is gone. And it's kind of broken up in this scenario by 5% basically not even making it to the clouds, okay, uh, 20% making it to the clouds and leaving, and 5% actually making it to the Earth's surface and jacking out, okay? So that's 30% in this scenario. That leaves, what, 70% that can do something else with. Okay. So the 70% in this scenario that something else is happening are right... Do you see them? Where's my 70%? Yeah. Yes, very good. That's one. Yes. That's the remainder of my stuff. Okay. Again, it varies, you know, from location to location. So 70%. So of that 70%, you told me that you think the Earth probably is unlike my styrofoam cup. You think the geosphere is pretty good at, you know, sucking up. And it is pretty good. That's why if you go up in the troposphere, it gets colder when you're getting away from the radiator. And in this scenario, 20% is absorbed by the clouds, and yeah, that does actually result in warmer clouds, kind of at that elevation. Kind of an energy balance. The other day, when I asked what happens on a sunny day if you wear a black shirt, you told me it gets warmer, exactly. So in general, black has high absorptivity, black colors. Um, if you're wearing something black and light is hitting it, those are the two things. You know, light is the energy we're talking about. Your black shirt is the object it's hitting. Okay, high absorptivity. Um, so there are other things, not black shirts, but there are, we don't have black shirts in the Earth's atmosphere. <laughs> but we did talk about ozone in the Earth's atmosphere as a variable gas, right? And we said the good ozone is in the stratosphere. Okay. And actually, um, one of the things that ozone does is heat up, Okay, kind of like your black shirt. That's how it interacts with one particular energy, ultraviolet radiation. Water vapor, again, black shirts aren't in the Earth's atmosphere. Something else that is in the Earth's atmosphere is another variable gas. And we'll be definitely talking more about water vapor, humidity and all that. But water in its gaseous state is a little bit like ozone, okay, in that it is actually selective for not ultraviolet light, but infrared, so that's kind of the energy of the particle, okay, and it definitely responds to, to warming up. And down here at the bottom, you know, this is funny, where people who have traveled, I love hearing your travel stories, because if you heard the dry heat in Phoenix or whatever, because the you know, the humidity's low. But with low heat, or excuse me, low humidity, with low humidity, um, you don't have this effect of water molecules possibly kind of taking the sting out of the, the energy coming from the sun. So I don't know. Okay, okay. I know, it's a small thing. Okay, so can you see the redirecting, the scattering? See the particle, see the energy coming in, and nope, you're out of here. That's redirecting. These are both redirecting. These are both forms of redirecting. One is a mirror. Like, use a mirror if you're like, hey, I know where my image is going to be. Okay, that's like meh, purposeful redirecting. We call it reflection. Okay, the other is like um, maybe you take a piece of tinfoil and wad it up. You know, kind of pulls it out. You can try to find your image. You're like, oh, it's kind of distorted. Okay, that's a little more like scattering. Same thing. Light hits it, aluminum foil, and it goes that way. And it's a nature of the energy, and it's a nature of the aluminum foil. Do you think if you took aluminum foil, you think gamma rays would? No. So again, you change up the energy, and you get a different outcome, right? So, okay. I like this topic, too. What's that? I wouldn't pass. 
Oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm not as fast as Sorry. Just let me know. See how warm that is. See, I could do this all day. <laughs> oh, in my head. Oh, okay. <laughs> Everyone should have one of those. Thank you. And some people do have these, right? How many people have one of these? I think you can get them on um, Amazon for like 20 maybe. I used to have to use them in the kitchen when I worked at the in school. In the kitchen? To yeah. make sure the freezers and coolers were That's reading correctly the temperature that they she had. She used them in the... Yeah. I was okay. a lunch lady. Aw, everyone loves the lunch ladies. <laughs> Not the middle school, they don't. Well, they should. <laughs> middle school, middle school don't like it. They, they don't. Like the Home Depot store so it's uh, for air conditioning and heating and cooling. Okay, yeah. Yeah. They're handy. And oh, fun. And fun. Probably an IRA. <laughs> <laughs> um, diffused light actually has to do with scattering. Um, and diffused light is kind of miscellaneous light. So one of the things, and I can look outside, we've got some sun out there, which is awesome. And it kind of, if you look outside, you can look if you want, but... You kind of see shadows, like I see a shadow being created by that bench over there. I see a shadow created by that tree, okay? Basically, a shadow is created because the sun is there, the object is here, the shadow is there, right? Okay. The sun is blocking, sorry, not the sun, the object is blocking direct light. Now, let's just say you go around the corner and on the, on the ground there, what if you place a mint, like a white mint or something? Like, hey, dude, and it's in a plastic bag so someone can go ahead and eat it. So you're like, hey, there's a mint there. Because you know what are those lifesaver ones that come mm -hmm. in? Yeah. Those are good. Okay, so get that mint there. But it's in the shadow, okay? You're like, how can you see that mint? This, the sun, the direct light from the sun is being blocked out. The reason you see that mint that's lying in the shadow is because of diffused light. Basically, that sun is shining in all directions, and some of that light is hitting the gas particles around and basically backdooring and shining on that mint. Isn't that a wonderful thing? But in order to have diffused light, you need to have an atmosphere. So one of the things I've looked at a little bit is on the moon, those moon pictures, okay? Mm -hmm. If you look at the daytime, like if the, the part of the moon was in the daylight, okay? So basically, dark. their shadows are deep and dark. It's diffused light, like on the moon? Gas particles? Not really, not so much. Okay, so diffused light is kind of that indirect light. So I went ahead and um, before this, this, uh, this morning when I was getting ready for this lecture, I went ahead and on the internet and typed in diffused light images. So I came up with one. It's a projector in a dark room. I think it does pretty good. You'd be surprised how sneaky light can be versus the direct light. Okay. So, diffused light. Can you see the direct light? Mm -hmm. Obviously. Okay, so the source is kind of, it's a projector. So you can see the source right here. Okay, and the direct light. Okay, it looks like it's got some sort of lensing sort of thing, so we kind of have a pattern. To me, that's all kind of direct light. Okay, and the thing about light is um, once it leaves its source like that, it um, basically kind of spreads out. So we have kind of a spray thing going on. But this over here and over here, okay, that is your diffused light. I mentioned the topic of a mint. Okay, if you place a mint over there, okay, basically you're able to see that mint because some of this light is interacting with gas particles in the room going in all directions. Kind of random. Scattering. I just think that's neat. Okay. So, you probably, there's a good chance you run, you run into this, this before. Back to visible light, you know, colors of the rainbow, visible light. 
Um, when you see an object, basically you are counting on um, like light from this room hitting that object and then that light coming back to you. So it's like a scattering or reflection. But specific to the color that you see, okay, if you're looking at for some, this is something blue, okay, if you, something looks blue, it looks blue because blue is coming back. But you're like, dude, from that light bulb, everything's hitting that color, or excuse me, everything's hitting your shirt, but only blue's coming back. Well, out of everything, then, that means that everything but blue, that leaves red, orange, yellow, green, indigo, and violet, those are the things that stay, and only blue's coming out. That's why we perceive colors. Okay. And I think I go on to say, you know, we've talked about wearing black on a summer day. Okay. The thing about the color black, in terms of um, those little energies coming back from something that's black, is basically nothing's getting back, okay? Everything's absorbed. And the thing about white things, white shirts or whatever, is all colors come back. Yeah, all colors scatter back. So that actually kind of, in a nutshell, talks about why in the summer, uh, oh, excuse me, I shouldn't say just in the summer, the sun's got to be out, right? If the sun's out, black shirts will get you hot. Uh, white shirts will keep it cool. So we talked about absorptivity. I didn't think about it till just now. Um, but albedo is like the opposite of absorptivity. I'm going to go ahead and add that. That's clever. <laughs> and the reason, if you see the, the reason, so albedo is basically how much it reflects off. Um, you might have, um, if you study astronomy much, they'll talk about the reflectivity. Oh, here's another one. We can call albedo is reflectivity. So it's the opposite of absorptivity and it's equal to reflectivity. Right. What I started to say is in astronomy, one of the things that's cool about um, our only satellite, the moon, that thing that goes around the Earth, is, is its reflectivity or its albedo. It has a generally a low albedo. You couldn't tell it on a bright, um, on a bright moon at <coughs> night, but it's pretty low. Okay. So here are some examples. Sun shining and kind of look for two things that affect how much um, light is either going to go ahead by that object be absorbed or it's going to be scattered. The two things are color. You know, the darker the color, the more it's absorbed, the, the, the less it's reflected. And also texture. Texture is an issue. So, so a lot of these are kind of intuitive. Um, clouds actually have a range of um, reflectivity or albedo. Okay. It kind of depends upon their, um, their elevation, their temperature, and their thickness. Snow, in general, has a pretty high reflectivity. Makes sense. It's white. It's white, exactly. <laughs> it makes sense. And um, I don't do any skiing anymore, <laughs> but it was fun when I did it <laughs> a little bit. But you can get sunburn. It's blinding. Yeah, it's blinding when you, when you ski. Sunglasses more in the wintertime, I feel like, than I do in the summertime Exactly. Sometimes. That snow can be so, like, um, just got a high reflects reflectivity. reflects the sun, the radiation of the sun back into you. It does. You're like, stop. Unless you're light deprived. Grass, eh, but it's definitely got a lower reflectivity. Darker color, kind of some texture issue. Sometimes grass is, uh, grassy surface is hot. Yep. Yeah. Um, forests, there's green, they tend to kind of suck up energy, low reflectivity. Um, dark plowed fields. In uh, unit two, it's called, uh, no, actually, I think it's coming up in a minute. It's in this unit. It's called terrestrial radiation. See this mini radiator? Mm -hmm. Okay. That, what does terrestrial mean? Mm -hmm. Terrestrial? No, terrestrial Earth. Is, is not, not of the Earth. It is space. Of the Earth. Uh, outer. What do we call? No, terrestrial means Earth. 
extraterrestrial. Yeah, extraterrestrial. I was like, yeah, extraterrestrial means an alien. A terrestrial would mean an earthling. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> okay, so um, this actually is terrestrial, meaning earth, radiation. And for you visual people, when I think of this, this one, and I've kind of shown it before, okay, what's, what's this down here? What's this with the hash marks? The no, not the atmosphere. Geosphere? Geosphere, yep. This means the Earth, the geosphere, and uh, yeah, you're right, the atmosphere is here. Is, atmosphere is here. So this um, terrestrial radiation is this. Does it look like oozing? Okay, basically that is the Earth being a mini radiator. Okay, we could do this. We could capture that. Okay. Terrestrial radiation. Here's one for bur burrowing animals. Eh, 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 eh. So it's quite possible to find a nice little insulated pocket that is near your, your Earth, and your Earth retains its heat for a while. So that little burrowing animal has this fighting chance okay, of surviving. Also, but their energy reflects yeah. constantly off the... Yeah, and their snow. energy would be contained in... The snow actually is a good insulator. Yeah, the snow is a good insulator. I wouldn't want to push it, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, and some of these shows where you're stranded, you know, it's a snowstorm, but, yeah. It is worth a chance. Okay, so that was the geosphere and kind of the kind of the um, terrestrial radiation. Switching gears now, when the sense when the sun sends us stuff, okay, it tries to send us stuff in our window, which may or may not be open. Our window may be open or our window may be closed. When I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the Earth's atmosphere and the sun sending us stuff. So when it comes to what happens to that particular energy from the sun, it has to do with the two things we talked about before. It has to do with um, which component of the atmosphere um, we're talking about, nitrogen, um, oxygen, ozone, and which form of radiation it is. So remember when I said what sort of interaction is going to happen depends upon the energy and the particle. Same thing here. But bottom line is that what you're going to see here in a minute is we get the energy from the sun and we get the visible light from the sun. That's the important stuff. The other cousins are kind of window is what we say shut. You know, one of the things I was thinking about now, are you, anybody else curious about the whole finding planets, other planets? Yeah. yeah. Finding other planets that are habitable that humans can go to another planet and it's orbiting another star. But the thing is, is not only does it have to be the right temperature and, and, and pressure, but it, the atmosphere needs to kind of do this with the, you know, so. I don't hear him talking about that. Okay, so do you recognize the big energy come from, from the sun? Okay, that was the, the red line kind of outlines energies from the sun. And that cute little hump over there is the energy coming from the earth. And then along the, the, um, the x-axis is the different wavelengths. Okay. So if we pick on nitrogen, nitrogen is this sliver right here. Okay. Um, so notice um, we're kind of focusing on absorptivity. So basically absorbs means takes away, right? So basically we're saying nitrogen takes away, um, will block, if it's coming from the sun, nitrogen, those particles in our atmosphere will block these particular, where you see the spikes in the Those wavelengths of energy are not going to leave or get through. Okay. That's how that works. Um, let's pick on another component in the Earth's atmosphere. Um, regular oxygen, so basically we had got 20% oxygen, and ozone, whether good or ozone or bad ozone. 
Notice that the important thing here, do you see this whole blocking, this adsorptivity, um, O2 and O3? It is blocking this shorter wavelength, okay? But it's allowing a little bit of blockage here, but it allows other things, a little bit of a blockage, blockage here. Okay, the middle one, carbon dioxide. Okay, and I think that's it. So, when they talk about an atmospheric window, basically they are saying, in this case, a way for the Earth to get rid of some of its heat. That is the atmospheric window. So, just to kind of highlight a few things about this. This right here, this is saying that um, I know we have some blockage here. Okay, water lets it go out. Carbon dioxide, not much blockage there, and it's open here. So this is a way for the earth to cool. Okay, so this would be outgoing energy. Outgoing energy. Okay, but if we look over here, notice that especially with regard to harmful energies, ultraviolet radiation can cause cancer. Um, we are definitely blocked, okay, with regard to those incoming. And if we were to look over here at um, x-rays and gamma rays, um, we would see the same thing. Our window is closed. Let's leave this slide for Friday. Friday. I'm getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably kind of take a running start at it. Yeah. Do we wear you out that much? Maybe. <laughs> so, um, yeah, his hump day. So your assignment won't be due until Monday, your Chapter 2 assignment. So we will start on Chapter 3 on Friday, though. Along with the quiz. Aren't we due for a quiz again? I think so. Are you going to be here Friday? You will be. She just threatened me. <laughs> Did I just hear that? <laughs>